Welcome back, Canonites, for a very special episode. Today, as you probably know, represents the 15th anniversary of Halo. Technically. I mean, Fall of Reach came out on October 30th, so really that's the 15th anniversary date, but semantics. November 15th holds a bit more importance as it was the launch of the killer app Halo CE and the original Xbox. With the anniversary today, while 343 has their special playlist and livestream later on, I figured I'd celebrate on my own way and talk about a couple of my favorite moments from each Halo title. Naturally, we start with Halo Combat Evolved. There are many amazing moments from the original Halo, storming the beach of the silent cartographer, discovering the horrors of the flood, etc, etc. For me though, there were two standout moments that have stayed with me longer than any others. First was that moment when you emerge on the Halo ring. You just escaped the Pillar of Autumn, barely, and your pod crashes on a mysterious ring world both alien and strangely familiar with its Earth-like surface. You know, other than the horizon curving upward. The second is much later in the game, when you discover the fate of Captain Keys. We didn't know a whole lot about him at the time, but he left his impact nonetheless, and if you'd read Halo The Fall of Reach prior to playing, that moment when Chief has to rip Keys' neural lace out of the proto-gravemind is much more impactful. Ten years later in Halo CE Anniversary, the emotion of this moment would only be heightened with the ninth CEA terminal showing Keys as he was consumed by the Flood. Keys. Take out the Captain Service Number 01928-19912 JK Our You will not have me We already do Rest in peace, Captain. Moving forward, we have Halo 2, which was my first Halo title back in early 2005. Again, there are some great moments, such as boarding the Scarab, returning the bomb, and playing as the Arbiter. As I was new to Halo at the time, though, playing as the Arbiter didn't have quite the same impact as it did for others, so you'll forgive me if I don't have that on my favorite moments list. For me, one of my first major moments was rolling across the bridge in New Mombasa for the first time. This was one of my earliest memories of Halo, and what really makes it stick out in my mind is that I accidentally betrayed a friend with the tank, and then spent the evening trying and failing to do it again. <laughs> I was pretty bad back then, but still sort of am. Anyone who's watched my live streams of Halo CE mods now knows why I love killing friendly AI though, as this is where it all began. My second favorite moment was when me and a friend finally completed Halo 2 for the first time. Late in 2005, or maybe early 2006, I don't recall, I just know it was winter, we stayed up until 4am, determined to beat the game, and when we finally did, we saw that final cutscene for the first time. Needless to say, we were both freaked out at how awesome it was, and what it meant for the next game. Next up is Halo 3. Halo 3 for me represented that moment where I really became a Halo fan. I'd played through the first two games by this point, and definitely read the novels. However, Halo 3 was where I truly got invested in the franchise, thanks in no small part to top-notch marketing and some favorite moments. First would be the end of the level of the storm. You charge the hill, take out every covenant bastard in your way, destroy the AA gun and open a hole for Hood's fleet to move in. The epic music from the E3 2006 trailer, seeing what was at the time an impressive number of ships open fire on the Forerunner Dreadnought only for it to emerge unscathed, was pretty damn epic for me back in 2007. To this day, it remains one of my favorite cutscenes from Halo 3. My second favorite moment is... sort of a cheat. The Scarab Battles. Boarding the Scarab was fun in Halo 2, but Bungie really stepped things up in Halo 3 with open battle spaces and multiple ways to approach the encounter, and no two encounters being the same. I personally always loved the first Scarab Battle the most, with the way it was introduced and the various approaches to taking it down. My favorite would easily be going up the elevator to board the Scarab and just beating your way through all the enemies to the end. A third thing I absolutely have to bring up is the final Warthog run. The run in CE was definitely an epic moment, one that I love to relive quite often, and Halo 3's was a wonderful tribute to that, along with a great way to end the game, and at the time, the franchise. There are plenty more that I could bring up, such as Terminals, Johnson's Death, but it's time to move on. Next up is Halo Wars, the first Halo RTS and the first Halo title to not be developed by Bungie. The game represented a departure in many ways, and for good reason, is fondly remembered by many. My first favorite moment is probably the most obvious, the cutscene known as Monsters. For the first time, we get to truly see what a Spartan was capable of, and boy are they capable. While you can certainly level some criticisms at the scene for its depiction of the Sunghealy, 
it's one I absolutely love. My second favorite moment is probably Ripa Morami's introduction. This massive elite that acts in a way pretty different from what we've come to expect of them. His stature and attitude immediately left an impact that has lasted to this day. After that we have Halo 3 ODST, what is easily my favorite Halo game. The atmosphere, the music, the voice actors playing as an ODST, all absolutely perfect. It's honestly hard to choose individual moments, but, you know, I'm, that's what I'm here to do. First is definitely the start of the game, where you drop into New Mombasa. Getting to look around, practically experience the drop for yourself, is unlike anything I could have hoped for at the time. To this day, I don't think any other Halo game has had an opening quite as strong as ODST's. His second favorite moment would probably be finding the last audio log. 30 in total, those that had found the first 29 would be treated to an interesting experience. You're teamed up with this mysterious NMPD cop who has you wait outside while he checks on something. Curiosity gets the better of you and you find him examining the body of Dr. Endesha. Worse, the cop now turns on you and you have to kill him. At the end, you're rewarded with the final audio log, wherein NMPD officer Mike and main character Sadie manage to escape New Mombasa as it's being overrun by alien invaders. I could go on and on about ODST, but it is time to move on. Next up is Halo Reach, Bungie's swan song for Halo. Reach was very controversial for just about any diehard Halo fan, but still had its share of epic moments. Number one for me is easily Carter's sacrifice near the end. I'd honestly grown attached to him over the course of the campaign, and his sacrifice brought a genuine tear to my eye. Second favorite moment would probably be the final level, Lone Wolf. I was almost tempted to put the max section from the end of Pillar of Autumn here, but I think Lone Wolf really takes the cake. Getting to play your character's final moments, his her death entirely in your hands. It's a moment that really solidified Reach's legacy for many, and ensured the game would never be forgotten. Now I'm sure some of you expect me to put Halsey as one of my moments for Halo Reach, but I think the next game on this list did her just a little bit better. Halo 4. First up is the opening cutscene. While it does have issues with the use of the Chief's modified Mark VI rather than Mark IV or Mark V, whatever it should be, the visual storytelling coupled with the interrogation of Halsey do a fantastic job of introducing the casual fans to the story behind the Chief, and more importantly, who Dr. Halsey is. The latter bit was something that Halo Reach failed at, I'm sorry to say. My second favorite moment though, honestly my absolute favorite moment, is the end, Cortana's sacrifice. We just lost her and she suddenly appears to restrain the Didact, then we activate the nuke seemingly killing ourselves in the process, only for Cortana to save us one last time with a hard light bubble. We exchange our last words before saying goodbye. I know for some this moment doesn't have quite the same impact after Halo 5, but for me it still brings a tear to my eye. And just for fun, a third favorite moment is the opening to Shutdown, with Cortana talking about how she'd never know if an artificial sun would seem real to a real person, and what is probably her most memorable line. Before this is all over, promise me you'll figure out which one of us is the machine. The impact of this moment was only enhanced when coupled with the Chief and Lasky's exchange at the end of the game. Following that, we have the first Halo mobile game, Halo Spartan Assault. My favorite moment from this game isn't really an individual moment, but the whole of Operation F, the bonus DLC. It was, at the time, one of the few moments of real character development for Palmer, and the mission to rescue Spartan Davis' remains was actually a great way to end the game. Next up is Spartan Strike, which was a big improvement over Spartan Assault in many ways. My favorite moment from this game would definitely be the final level, where you're playing as another Spartan, while the Spartan you played in the previous operation is inside an Oni lab in New Phoenix. Your job is to hold off waves of Prometheans, and with all the weapons lying around on the ground, it's a lot of fun. Finally, we close today out with the most recent Halo title, Halo 5 Guardians. For all its faults, the game does have some fairly epic moments. First on this list would easily be the run down the back of a Guardian on the level Genesis. It's a bit too brief, but damned if it isn't fun as hell. My second favorite moment would probably be the opening to the Battle of Sunion. For the first time, we get a true feeling of large-scale battle as 343 takes advantage of the next-gen capabilities of the Xbox One. That's not really to say anything negative about previous games, notably Halo Reach, but the limitations of the 360 are pretty apparent when compared to the Battle of Sunion. I also personally love Tanaka's speech. So, there are some of my favorite moments from the Halo games over the years. How about you all? What are your favorite moments? Let me know in the comments below. Once again, a very happy 15th anniversary to the Halo franchise, and here's hoping for at least 15 more. 
To celebrate, there's a special playlist in Halo 5 where you'll have the chance to play against 343 employees, and there will be a stream starting at 3.43 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on twitch.tv slash Halo. You can also share your fondest Halo memories on social media with the hashtag 15 years of Halo. Thanks for tuning in as always. Happy 15th anniversary, Halo. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.